Stacy Lattisaw was a charming teenager and a child star with the voice of a singer far beyond her years. She was signed to a major label at the age of 12 and enjoyed a top 10 hit a year later. By the time she was 13, Stacy was a chart topping R&B sensation. She seemed to be living a dream, opening for and befriending Michael Jackson and sharing songs with another teenage talent, Johnny Gill. The strong yet sweet voice made a big impression on the 1980s music scene with a string of hits that included Let Me Be Your Angel, Love on a Two-Way Street, and Miracles. But after a decade-long career, Stacy turned her back on the music industry business and walked away. Certain things I didn't wear, okay? Because I always knew that, that young ladies were watching me and I always wanted my image to be clean. Maybe if I had showed more breasts or maybe if I showed more, you know, behind, maybe I could have become more successful. But hey, honey, if it takes that, I didn't want it. If the click means snorting cocaine, having sex with certain people, if that's what success means to some people, if that's what it takes, I don't need to be in that click. Stacey Lattisaw was born November 25, 1966 in Washington, D.C. to her parents, Jerome Lattisaw Sr. and Sandra Lattisaw. She has two sisters and one brother. Stacy was very shy and soft-spoken as a child, and at the age of six, her mother realized she could sing. She would perform home shows and talent shows, and at the age of nine, she had her first opening act with Ramsey Lewis. Lottasaw recorded her first album with Atlanta Records at the age of 12 in 1979. She had several R&B hit records between 1981 and 1986. At the age of 13, Stacy toured with the Jacksons in 1981. She was the opening act on a 13-week tour and performed with some of the biggest names in the recording industry. She had several powerhouse hits with Johnny Gill, including Perfect Combination. In 1986, she signed with Motown Records. She scored her only number one R&B hit with duet partner Johnny Gill titled Where Do We Go From Here? In 1989, which was the 1980s R&B duet favorites. Entering the music business at 12 years old, Stacy wasn't sure what to expect. She wanted to sing, but she didn't re realize she would have to give up so much of her time and her life. Things changed for Stacy when she reached middle school. She went through a lot. Still shy and soft-spoken, she would stay to herself. She started being bullied. The other girls would begin to call her conceited, stuck up, red girl, white girl, yellow girl, and so much more. Even some teachers would give her a hard time because she was 13 years old with a hit song. And she had went through that for two years. I was picked on in school. I was called white girl, yellow girl, red girl, because I was light skinned and had green eyes. You know, but people, kids can be cruel. Cool. You know, even the teachers in school, all this in my book, the teachers in school, I had problems with some of the teachers because I was 13 years old and had a top 10 hit. Um, yeah, radio and all that stuff. So yeah, I, I, I went through a lot, but uh, it's all good now. <laughs> Stacy had to be homeschooled from eighth to 12th grade. She was always on the road performing here and there. And she really wanted to be home with her friends playing volleyball, double dutch, and other things kids did. Stacy did not have a normal childhood and that affected her. Stacy stated the music industry was her mother's idea. Her mother used to sing with Marvin Gaye but had put her career down to raise her children. Stacy believed her mother wanted to live her dream through her because her mother's dream never took off. Just pretty much wanted to sing at home and you know as, as most kids do and have a normal childhood you know 
But um, by the time I was 12 years old, I recorded my very first album on Atlantic Records, and um, my childhood was, was no longer the same. You know, my, my life began to change at that point. You talked a lot about that in the book, about not having a childhood and, and touring with your mother and going on different tours and mm -hmm. things like that. Talk a little bit about that. Actually, uh, that was quite challenging for me because as a child, you know, at the age of 10, 13 years old, that was quite challenging for me. I had to come out of school in the eighth grade. I had to be homeschooled because um, kids were starting to pick on me and, and my single, Love on Two Way Street, had become a top 10 record. So um, things began to change for me. And it was just not, you know, just, it, it, it was a, an interesting time, but at the same time, it was not uh, quite as enjoyable for me because I had so much stress on me, traveling, doing, you know, two or three shows a week and on the airplanes constantly. And, uh, but my mom singing was my mother's uh, passion. My mother singing with Marvin Gaye. They went to school together in Washington, D.C. And uh, she was in a group with him and she was one of the lead singers. And uh, later on, she began to have kids and, and she realized by the time I was six years old that I could sing. So it was my mother's idea for me to sing, not mine especially to be a professional singer. She was living ours, mine and my husband's. Stacy didn't have a clue what she was getting herself into, okay? Because I was just a little girl, and all I wanted was a normal childhood. To tell you the truth, Stacy did not want a career in singing, but I think she did it because we that's what we wanted her to do. In an interview, Stacy stated that it's no secret that the music industry has many downfalls. Many young artists dive into the music business with high hopes and big dreams, but are often met with disappointments. People only see the glitz and glamour. They don't know the sacrifices she had to make. Stacy suffered depression off and on from about 14 to 15 years old and by the time she was 21, she was very depressed. After a few years, 10 albums, and several hits later, the entertainment life was taking a toll on Stacy. She couldn't understand why she was suffering from bouts of depression when she had accomplished so much and had so many material things. She felt an em emptiness inside of her. After suffering with bouts of depression, Stacy began to seek God. Uh, people don't realize being a child star was very, very hard for me. And sometimes I have moments when I think about it. But where I am now, I, I'm just, I'm just in a such, much a better place now. But I suffered with panic attacks at 12 and 13 years old. Mm. Suffered with, you know, bouts of depression. And uh, people only see the glamour and glitz of the entertainment business. They don't know what it's like to be, to have all that stress and that, that type of you know, um, I would say pressure on you. Mm -hmm. It was not for me, you know. To have all the money in the world, live in the finest house on the hill, but still be not happy, have, you know, this void on the inside and depressed and sad. And I always call people like that materially rich but spiritually poor. Stacy had enough after the number one R&B hit with duet partner Johnny Gill, Where Did We Go From Here? The song was at number one on the charts for four weeks. She did not receive any royalties, and Motown told her and Johnny that they had only sold 30,000 copies. Stacy said the main keys to surviving in the music business is having knowledge about the business of it and having a strong support team that is reliable, but most of all, trustworthy. Stacy's parents didn't know the business, and because of that, they were taken advantage of. Actually, what really put the icing on the cake for me was when the duet Don and I did, Where Do We Go From Here? Mm -hmm. We were told that that was the number one song on the Billboard chart for four weeks. We were told that song only sold 30,000 copies. So I found it hard to believe. Johnny was like, we're gonna get an attorney. He said he was like, you know, he was really, really heated about it. And I was upset myself. But at that point, I said, you know what? I'm going to walk away from it all. And I don't care if you 
can be the best singer in, in town. But if you do not have the right representation as far as a good management, a good entertainment lawyer, a good support system, you know, people will beat you out of a lot of money. So that's what happened to me. I was beat out of a lot of money at my management company. They beat me out of thousands and thousands of dollars. I was beat out of money over at Motown Records. And, you know, it was just a situation where my parents, they were regular people. They had my mom. She was a stay-at-home mother. So, uh, and my father, he had a government job. So back then, we didn't know anything about the music industry. We were just, you know, going with the flow, per se. But, you know, as time went on, uh, we were beat, I was beat, beat out of a lot of money. So That is when Stacy made the decision to walk away from the music industry. And she never looked back. Stacy was not willing to make any sacrifices that would lower her standards because she had morals. As Stacy began to mature in age and mind, her desires began to change. Many wondered why after such great success Stacy walked away from the music industry, but family and friends were not so surprised. They knew the price she had paid for a decade at the top of the music business and how she had fulfilled everybody's dreams except her own. Since then, she has solely sung gospel music. I never went to the after parties. I never had sex with some of the company execs. People sell their souls, and I was never gonna sell my soul. Gerald Busby talked to my husband, and he said, is this really what Stacy wants to do? Because they knew that this what her heart wasn't in it anymore. He knew too that it was it was just over. So that's the way it ended. That was my last single, which was the number one hit, number one on the charts. I walked away at that point. That was it for me. In nineteen ninety two, Stacy married Kevin Jackson. They had two children, Kevin Jr. and Kayla Jackson. Stacy said she had found peace after leaving the music industry and won't hesitate to tell anyone that it was her relationship with God that carried her through the most difficult periods in her life. She now ministers in word and song, and she often says that everything she's been through has made her who she is today. She now has a ministry for women called Women Walking with Authority, she also has a youth empowerment program where she goes out to schools encouraging our youth, the next generation, the importance of integrity and becoming leaders, not followers. Stacy says she's a well-kept woman, kept by the grace of God. And if you made it to the end of this video and enjoyed the video, I ask you to give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you will be notified when I upload another video and I also ask you to comment down below and tell me what you think of this video thanks for watching